Good morning, good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tony Commander, J.R. Kapokwa Chess and Talk Show. Today is Monday, October the 4th. It's another week, and let's get into our, my lesson this morning. As you can see, I have my usual three points here today. And on the second point, I have A and B also added. <clears throat> because of the significance of the problems we are facing in Liberia today. Because of the significance for our young people to get a grip of their lives and understand that they are a significant part of Liberia's developmental process and advancement for today and tomorrow. Now let's get into my lesson. My first topic today is Joe Biden, Vice President Joe Biden, a wise, competent, and experienced leader. I am voting for Joe Biden. And the reason why I'm voting for Joe Biden, because throughout this, his, this campaign period, throughout this COVID-19 period, he has demonstrated the kind of maturity, the kind of leadership, and the kind of compassion that we need of a new president to lead us out of this debacle of a leadership to a more profound future and destiny for our people and country. We have, have the, we have to have the opportunity to reset our constitutional insight based on what we have learned from this past administration. We have to set the direction of our country laid out in our constitution to prevent a reoccurrence of this incompetent leadership we have experienced for the past four years. <clears throat> Now I'm so glad that Joe Biden is finally given the opportunity to show that he is a leader that is deserving to be the president of this nation. Joe Biden is deserving to be the man leading us into the future, uniting us as never before. And with Kamala Harris, Mama La, Mama La Harris had his back. There's no stopping us. No stopping us. We just gotta get our act together and move forth towards a new and profound future and destiny for all the American people. We have learned a lot these past few years. We have learned a lot about division, about hate, about the negative things that has kept us down these many years that we have been fighting to rise up from, especially since the election of Barack Obama. But we see there are still people who want to dwell on hate, on the years of the past believing that it will empower them further, it will reach them further. And these, these days and ages do matter because they want to take us back to what their fathers had us under. 
It can't happen. It can't happen. Besides people like Joe Biden, who understands the intricacies of life, who understands that one grace of people cannot lead our world. There will always be chaos and confusion and destruction and violence and wars. Why? Because we will not sit and let one race dominate our world continuously, not in this new age and era. So Joe Biden, the first thing he did, he chose a vice president that represents every American nearly. Every American. Mamala Harris is the Mamala. And that's very true if you watch Saturday night. So Kamala Harris is vice president to be. And she will be vice president. Because we have seen now the dereliction of duties the failure of the past administration, the failure to take care of the health of the American people, and especially our leader's own health. If our leader is so reckless with his life, with his health, and we see that over 200,000 plus Americans have already died, 200 plus. This is insanity. And now the man who led us into all of this has is found that they've been stricken with the disease himself. And despite the fact we are all sympathetic towards him, despite the fact of all his action against other races and hateful behavior and use of violence against his own people, we are Americans. We still share that empathy with him that he didn't share with us. And this is what Christianity is based on. You know, we don't seek revenge. Jesus Christ, we handle that. That's his duty, not our duty. And Jesus Christ loved the United States of America. He protects the United States of America. Why? Because America is the leader of the free world. And because of our constitutional democracy, masses of the people in the world look to us for leadership, protection, direction, advice, and everything they need to help the people on the path to peaceful, living, to share living under our democratic system of guidance. So you see, Jesus Christ guides this nation. And as long as the President of the United States of America and those who support him call upon the name of Jesus Christ, they will be made ashamed if they try to lead this country on any path other than the true democratic path that was set by our forefathers from time immemorial. We have weathered all the pains of slavery. We have weathered all the pains of hatred. We have weathered all the negative pains of the deprivation of wealth, of our pursuit, our pursuits of happiness. We have weathered all of that and we still maintain our love for the concept constitutional democracy that is furthered by the United States of America. Why? Because it's the closest thing to Christianity. It's the closest thing to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not putting down the Muslims. I'm not putting down any religion. But Jesus Christ's two principles was love your God. He didn't care which God you had. He didn't care who was your God. He said, love thy God. And if you believe in him, you will love the God that he loved. And if you're a Muslim, love your God. You have to do, love your God. And the second thing he told us, which many religions 
Do not hang on to Love thy neighbor as thyself. So these are the foundations that Job Biden is imbued with. These are the values that Kamala Harris is imbued with. So we have two leaders of our nation who are experienced leaders in their own rights and coming together to lift us out of this debacle of a leadership, this hatred, enslavement of evil and devilish behavior. He coming to lead us out of it into a true and new era of constitutional democracy for all Americans. And I stand with Joe Biden and Kamala Mamala Harris. Aluta! Continue. We need a company. We need a wise leader. And Joe Biden has proven to be that. No matter what this man said about him, all the insults and negativity he threw at this man, he spewed at him, he remained calm and stayed on his course. Now who has the greatest chance of being president of the United States of America? in the next few weeks. You know, our president has COVID-19. You know, you think he just get up and come back, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. He was a strong man. And people in the 70s and 80s, once you're strong and once you get hit with illness, that's it for you. That's it. And he didn't believe that. He took it for granted. And he led many people to their deaths. Now he's on his bed and we're praying for him to rise. But he can't lead this nation. He can't lead us. We know that Joe Biden is the man to lead us. And we cannot be misled. We cannot be deceived. We cannot be denied the right to have a better leadership of our country and our people today. America deserves better. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the right choice for the American people today. We need our pride and dignity uplifted. Now, Aluta continue. My second point on Liberia, my country is in crisis. We are in deep crisis. And our young children are so oblivion, uh, oblivious to the fact that their lives are in jeopardy. They are foolish people, young children. You know, because of the few lights, light poles that George Weir has put on on one strip of street, I heard them rejoicing in since 1846, 1847, we never had lights. And that's not true. Because you still don't have lights. You can have lights on two blocks and you can't say that the lights in the whole nation, you'd be rejoicing and acting like foolish people. My young children, we've been through this before. Everything you're doing now is not new. We've seen it before and that we we're telling you, it is not right, it is not safe. Cool yourself. Get your, seek your education and your knowledge and leave this politics business. Focus on the need for you to get good educations. Education. You need to excel and exceed on your own terms and to, for your own personal upliftment instead of other people's. Instead of getting paid and getting chicken change to speak and protect other people when these people are not protecting you. These people are seeking their own self-interest and preservation and have no thought of you, only when they need you. And they are so deceitful, they know how to deceive you. Because you're so blind and you're so in need of change in our country. So they bring these things to you to make you happy as to steal more, to steal more, 
that one strip of light on Tatman Boulevard, or wherever it is. What will it do for you? We all Liberians can gather there in the night because that's the only place got light now. So if all of your entertainment, all the shops will be on on that one day strip now, and every night everybody will just come there and party on the 10, 11 o'clock, clock, then they go back home in the, in the dark homes and go back to the candles and the lanterns and the dining rooms. Is that the kind of life you want? Because without true electricity and true development, there is no development. There is no development. And you need to wake up, young children. You need to stop deceiving yourselves because all that thing you're doing, telling people, oh, the president will need to stay there for so long and day. He's good, he's good. He's not doing nothing for you. What's happening in your lives? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So let me continue my lesson. Liberia is in crisis. And we need to focus on how and why it's important for us to rise for our own personal and national interests. Two interests, and we've got to pay attention to those interests. Okay? A, the rise of killing and raping in Liberia is astronomical. We cannot continue to have our people subjected to this violence. That's the same thing as number two, A and B, increased violence and lawlessness. I saw that picture of how they killed that woman in a dirty water. She had two feet of water when they drowned that woman in that water. Then we see here with these two people in the car that got killed the other night. We don't know whether they were set up but we don't know whether to kill them from out and brought them and put them in the car. We don't know because Sonny Paul Smith was even mad at how the police had tampered with the evidence. And there's no equipment, there's no trained police force in Liberia to conduct murder investigation. Our people are not trained to follow procedures and, and know when to call police for certain things and leave the body alone. People who want to touch it and think and see, see, this is like people who just coming out of war. People have no regards for dead bodies. People ate dead bodies. People seen play with dead bodies all through our civil war. So how can that change? How would that change? Except we take charge of our own country and our own lives. We have to be conscious of all these things. And you see with me, I don't come here to call other people to re regurgitate the same things I'm telling you. But I'm just stressing this point that you young children have a responsibility to stand firm on the foundation of your own lives, your own dignity and pride, your own future and advancement. Speak for yourself. Don't speak for we are. Don't speak for the wicked people. You all need to be in schools. You all need to have vocational training now. You all need to rise up and stand up for your future. In the future, I'll keep warning you. You'll fail to get educated now. You'll fail to find the fruits of your own needs and beneficial advancements now. You will not get in the future. The people come in the future home. They will need educated people. People got jobs coming. They will need people with 12th grade degrees who can read and write, who can do math and science. Those are the basic things you need for developing our nation. And if you fail to consistently forget that and follow politics and follow George Weah and all the people singing Munya, Munya, Munya instead of demanding education for yourselves, knowing that these people got money. Knowing that these people building mansions and you're living in the slums and wretched lives, that need to be changed. You all need to be treated better. And the only thing that is advantageous to you 
matters point in your survival is your education. And if you fail to understand that, if you fail to see the need to advance yourselves and impose upon the government the rights of yourselves and the need for the government to act in your best interest, to secure your constitutional rights to your own pursuit of happiness by providing the foundational needs for all Liberian youth. Y'all can't keep her on this path. Y'all can't keep her on this path. When I come here, I come to talk to you about politics doing this. I'm telling you about your own lives. I'm telling you that you need to change your lives. I'm telling you that your own future and destiny is in your hands. And we gotta move our country forward. We gotta stand up with leaders who we know will change our country. George Weir, Prince Johnson, Ellen Johnson, Sally, Ellen, the Snow, all these people are warlords and killers and involved with war in our country. They cannot lead us. They gotta go. We need new leaders. Your vote for new leaders among you. Your find new people who are trustworthy, appear to be trustworthy, and have not been mingled and mixed with these groups of bandits and criminals. We need to find new leaderships in Liberia and in the diaspora. We need to get rid of the warlords who try to stop our people from coming home when there's a dire need for diaspora Liberians to return home. I care about that dual citizenship. What a dual citizen for Liberian citizen? That's an acid stupid thing. And that thing should be stricken under the Constitution of Liberia. Once you are a Liberian born citizen, your citizenship can't be taken from you. What's wrong with you, these people? Are you crazy? You crazy? Especially if you reach your age of majority, 18 or more, and leave your country with all the, the connections you have in your country, family ties, our close knit families. Only rogues will stop people from coming home. Only thieves and bandits will treat their people like this. And we have thieves and bandits leading us now. They can get awards from anywhere in the world. It doesn't mean nothing. We know who they are. And we know their character and value to our people and nation. The time of the Liberian people is now. Young children are consistently talking to you. You need to rise up. You need to stand up. You need to move forward and ensure your lives are given meaning, are given fruitful, productive incentives and benefits to build yourselves for the future or tomorrow. The time of the Liberian people is now. Aluta. Now my third point, Darius Dillon, Darius Dillon, Yeke Koluba versus George Huya and Warlords. I don't know what these people bothering Yeke Koluba for. Yeke Koluba is an independent speaker. He has his supporter. You won't get rid of Yeke, you won't get rid of Darius Dillon. Who you won't get rid of now? You don't just want to kill everybody in the country. And I'm glad Jacob Koloba decided to go back to his party for his own protection, his own support. I, I don't care too much about the politics in Liberia, but I know my people can't just be killed and violence perpetrated all through my country. This thing can't continue. Our government can be the perpetrator of wickedness and evil against his own people. We went through that for over 50 years now, 50, 60 years from door time to this very day. How long, black Liberian people, how long will we continue to have our leaders, the killers of our people? The time of black Liberian people is now. 
Young Liberians, I don't like to keep my lesson on too long. I don't like to consistently say the same things. That's why I don't like people coming up because we're talking the same thing. Other shows do that. But when you listen to me, I want to impress upon you the significance of my message, the importance of what I'm, the importance of what I'm saying to you. Because what I'm saying to you is touching upon the very foundation of your lives, your family future, and your personal and family future as well. When you crippled, you can't have nobody. When you follow all these war laws and get hurt and injured. You can't hurt nobody. You can't help nobody. And you know that the, the medical and health situation in Liberia, how terrible they are. You get yourself mixed up in this violence and get hurt needlessly. You will suffer needlessly. And we don't need that for our youth. You've got to find a way to stand up and demand what is necessary for yourselves. And that is a good education. Every door will open to you. Every door will open to you. Once you strive, you knock, you seek, and you ask, all things will be rendered unto you. The time of the Liberian people is now. My young children, that's my lesson today. You people think about what I'm telling you. I try to keep it short because I don't want to make my lesson long that you're they're all confused, trying to figure out what Chester said, say, then you gotta keep going back to my tape. You know? No, no, no. Pay attention. Be focused. Remain strong. And all things will happen to you. Whether you're Christian, whether you're Muslim, whether you juju practitioner, it doesn't matter. Love your God with all your heart and with all your mind. And do the Christian thing, the only Christian thing that we ask of you. Love yourselves as you love each other. Aluta! Continue. Have a good day.